Welcome to your Full Circle Friday. My name is Sarah, a certified trauma recovery coach with Full Circle Wellspring. Trauma causes a disruption in our neural pathways and can halt survivors from staying connected to themselves, others, and the world around them. They can abandon or exile parts of themselves behind a wall of shame and fear. These episodes are dedicated toward understanding trauma and learning about outside resources, adjunctive services, recommendations, techniques, coping skills, and more to support and encourage the survivor on their journey back to their authentic selves. Let's get started. Today's topic is useful. On Wednesday's episode, we talked about discovering which coping skills from your trauma have become no longer needed. They aren't serving you anymore, or they've even been destructive to your well-being. So today I want to wrap around some of that concept with some resources that might be helpful to survivors so that you can begin to uproot those maladaptive coping mechanisms and replant with some useful ways to be supported as you seek health and wellness in your trauma recovery. My personal philosophy is that we are made up of many components. I don't think you'll just find the perfect therapist and your life will change forever. I also don't believe that you can just find the love of your life and all the pieces will fall into place. I believe in a whole balance of all your main parts, mental, physical, spiritual, psychological, interpersonal, intrapersonal, social, sexual, nutritional, recreational, financial, educational, familial, environmental, and probably a few more that you can think of for your own personal journey. These pillars are areas where we can find healthy attributes and actions that can come together to create a synergy of support, health, and positivity. You may know someone, for instance, who has so many friends, has a great outdoor lifestyle of regular activities, but hates their job or their spouse. The imbalance there is going to eventually cause a suffering. And you know, as trauma survivors, we've suffered enough. The work we do in our trauma recovery road is deep, painful at times, and healing. And in this process, it's important that we do what we can to find peace in other areas of our lives the best that we can. Again, this is an ongoing progressive lifestyle challenge. The universe is going to ebb and flow your current situation from time to time. No one can be a happy millionaire fun model all the time, nor should that be the goal. So here's where you get to have some fun. Here's where you get to set your sights on a vision of what a peaceful, happy life looks like for you. This exercise might also be a little bit triggering as you investigate, so don't get down on yourself too hard when examining these things. Take some time when you feel grounded and safe to take a little inventory of some of these cornerstone areas of your life. Write down what each one means for you. Figure out what would be useful ways to move ever so slightly toward your most ideal and then start some small practices. Finding balance in some of these areas will naturally start to move you away from some of those maladaptive coping patterns that you've been in because you can begin offering your mind and body and spirit new tools to try. So when you're stressed, depressed, overwhelmed, or triggered, you can have these ideas of useful resources in your back pocket, and it gives your brain a larger variety of things to choose rather than just its usual default coping skill. So here's some ideas just to get you started. So for mental health, you could get out in nature to reconnect by disconnecting, turn off the news, find a therapist or a coach, utilize a mood tracker app, ask for help when you need it, try volunteering somewhere meaningful to you, For physical health, practice some joyful movement. Go swimming just for fun. Take a friend on a hike. Switch up your routine. Set an alarm to stand up once an hour at your desk to stretch. Find a type of body work that you enjoy receiving. For your spiritual health, you could try meditation. Keep a dream journal. Ask someone you admire about their spiritual beliefs. Seek help for any religious trauma in your past. For your psychological help, you could read The Body Keeps the Score by Vanderkolk. 
If you believe you have a psychiatric issue, consult with your doctor. Ask a trusted family member about your family's psychiatric health history. Find a grounding technique that works for you. For your interpersonal health, learn about active listening. Join a team sport in your community. Ask your partner to try a couple's counseling to improve communication skills for you both. For your intrapersonal health, work with an IFS practitioner to improve your self-energy and self-leadership. Set aside time for self-inquiry and reflection at the end of the day. Practice self-affirmations. Look at yourself in the mirror for just two minutes in the morning and smile at yourself. For your social health, you could ask a friend to try a spin class at your gym. Attend a function that seems casual and set a time to be able to excuse yourself. Pick an acquaintance that you aren't emotionally invested in so that you can practice boundaries on them. Try a book club. For your sexual health, Google Goop's erotic blueprints and do some exploration of your inner workings. If you've had sexual trauma, you can find a sexual trauma therapist. Ask your partner to try something new with you if they're comfortable. Practice self-care and self-exploration. For your nutritional health, you can try intuitive eating. Work with a trauma-trained practitioner who specializes in eating disorders. Drink more water. Turn off commercials when you're watching TV. For your recreational health, do something daring like rock wall climbing. If you have physical limitations, try something adventurous via virtual reality. Go somewhere you've never been, but in a 30 mile radius of your home. Have a picnic at a local park. Emotional health. Get a feelings wheel and try to name your emotions. For the females, track your menstrual cycle to see if you have strong emotional dips that could be discussed with your doctor. Allow any grief or anger from your past to come to the surface in a safe way. Find support with a coach or therapist to explore repressed emotions. For your financial health, find a trusted advisor. Set up a budget. Clip coupons for regularly needed items just for one month and explore the savings. Think about whether it's time to ask your boss for a raise. Give to charitable organizations that mean something to you. For your educational health, try taking a free online mastermind in an area of learning that you're interested in. Discover the power of YouTube by learning a new instrument. Contemplate if maybe going back for another degree would make sense for you. For brain stimulation, try a dance or pottery or art class just for fun. Download some brain training apps. For your familial health, take an inventory of the relatives in your life and ask yourself which ones have your full trust and which ones you may need to have no contact with and everything in between. Let your closest family know your trauma recovery journey so they can begin to understand you and the changes that you're starting to make. Find a family therapist if you believe it would help any discord in your immediate family. Set aside a family dinner night just once a week or maybe just once a month based on everyone's schedules. For your environmental health, invest in an air filter at least for your bedroom. Add more plants to your home or office. Work with a professional to help you quit smoking. Recycle. Get a BPA-free water bottle. Try some detoxification patches. So this is obviously not anywhere near a complete list, but I hope these are a few useful ideas to get the ball rolling as you take an inventory of these areas of your life. Imagine the power of implementing something small like daily self-affirmations for your interpersonal health as a supplantation to your inner critic who loves to come in as a coping skill when you're under stress. Eventually, the affirming self will have a more habitual ground in your life than the critical one. So these are just some examples. I will always stand by the opinion that everyone needs to find their own regimen for improving their day-to-day -day lifestyle, health, and wellness. It is imperative to have a strong, healthy lifestyle while journeying down this trauma recovery maze. I would love to help any way that I can. So if you need some more ideas or for some more personalized resources, reach out and connect with me. And I'd love to hear what you do to help yourself in these key areas of life as well. Keep progressing and be gentle with yourself. A masterpiece isn't painted all in one day. Small incremental changes will lead you to a content lifestyle. 
find balance. You got this. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Trauma Survivorhood. This has been written and created by your host, Sarah, a trauma recovery coach. For more info about me, trauma recovery resources, or to check out our support groups, classes, free survivor circles, private coaching, and more, visit www.fullcirclewellspring.com. Schedule a complimentary 20-minute discovery call to see if coaching is right for you. For the latest info on schedules and updates, follow us on Facebook at Full Circle Wellspring. All other media, social links, blogs, and show notes are posted in the episode guide below. Until next time, be well, survivors.